Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy all the while. Well, trying to get it geared up for some pretty major cruising someday and it's going really, really well. So if that's the sort of thing you might be interested in, please consider sticking around and subscribing. We'd love to have you. weeks have we been down in the village so far? Uh, quite a few. Uh, truth is there's quite a lot of other um, associated things that I've had to get done. But ready to start building in here or are we? Um, have some wood, more on that in a minute. And uh, I thought it might be a good time to have a bit of a tour of exactly the condition, the state and the situation going on in the village before we start putting stuff together. Shall we? Well, starting forward, you can see um, just the upper section of the new helm and its uh, chain to cable steering arrangement. Uh, for those of you who haven't uh, been following for a while, this is a uh, rebuild of um, the original uh, chain to cable to quadrant steering. Um, went through a bit of a debate whether or not I'd move to hydraulic steering and I really feel comfortable, in fact, quite happy about going with chain to cable to quadrant. To me, it's perpetually repairable, uh, it's straightforward, it's simple. Now, it has some complications. It did mean I had to go to some trouble to align the pulleys, shivs uh, properly and make sure that everything is strong enough. More on that in a little bit, but I am happy with it and for the meantime, that's what we're sticking with. Um, other than that, uh, the bulkhead to the uh, forward cabin, some will recognize that there's a filler piece in here. Uh, some time ago, I moved the companionway from center um, to the starboard side um, for basically mostly space planning things. Um, the rest of the bulkhead is in fantastic shape. I'm amazed considering it's perpetually wet. Um, but so let's go through a little bit of a tour here. Um, the existing engine beds, uh, as uh, you all know, are completely destroyed, so they'll be coming out. I'm going to put new engine beds in 6x6 six six Douglas fir outside these. In other words, right down through here. There's enough flat surface left on the floors that they can sit in there. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the engine sits very low. Even though the Beta Marine isn't as deep as the Perkins was, I need to be able to have it sitting as low as possible in relation to the engine beds. And if the beds are high next to the engine, it's hard to service the engine, get an oil filter and stuff like that. So by moving them outboard and putting longer uh, engine mounts on them, I'm able to have a lot more space around the engine and, uh, and make it a lot easier to service and manage things that underneath clean, etc. Plus I'm gonna put a big drip pan under there, more on that in the future. The other reason to have big engine beds and to have them outboard is some of you will remember there were some ugly big fuel tanks here. Well, they were just sort of very poorly tacked to the frames. Um, in fact, very little of the weight was on the floors and fuel tanks are heavy. If I would imagine putting a 100 gallon fuel tank each side, which I may not, but if I did, that's 700 pounds per side. That's twice the weight of the engine, more. So there's a significant amount of weight that has to be able to bear on something. Uh, obviously, we don't want it bearing on the planking. It would just push it off the bottom of the boat. I don't really want to put it on the frames. Um, even putting it on the floors, which are really just connected to the planking and the frames, is not ideal. I'd like the bulk of the weight of the new fuel tanks to actually be carried by the new engine bearers, which will be right here. Of course, eventually that weight goes down to the floors, down to the frames and the planking. But because the new engine bearers are gonna be six by sixes and all the way from the forward bulkhead to the aft bulkhead, uh, perforated as it is, I think if I can put the bulk of the weight of the new tanks onto those beds, it will really uh, ease up my anxiety about putting too much weight on the actual hull. Um, the tanks, of course, are going to be triangular, much deeper on the inboard side and then tapering up. So there's significantly less weight on the outboard side. Anyway, cutting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but the engine bed's got to be replaced for sure. Okay, so if we carry on with the floors, which is the next major timber in here, you can see the engine beds are notched around them, uh, but they are continuous. But if you've been following along for a little while, let me get this up, you can see that Many of the floors have been chopped up as they traversed across where the engine was. 
that's still a pretty nasty mess in there. I haven't had much chance to tidy that up in there yet. So this one, this one, this one, this one, all have to be replaced with new ones that aren't cut out, although they will have a small notch for the beta ring. In addition to that, I'm gonna be putting new frames in between these frames that go all the way up to about that string here, if not that one, and extra floors. This will be a sea of new structure down here. Um, again, trying to significantly strengthen this part of the boat where all this heavy weight is and to improve the strength of the boat if it's to sit on its keel for extended periods of time, either at haul outs or being shipped or gosh forbid, sitting on the bottom. Hmm. Okay, so the next major structural element would be the frames. And that's these pieces. Uh, some would call them ribs. Well, you can see in some places, especially right at the waterline, there is some damage. Um, I'm going to call that iron sickness. Uh, I believe it is iron sickness from the um, galvanized iron boat nails that this boat was put together with. And right at the waterline is where they seem to suffer the most. And uh, that rots out the lignin in the, uh, in the white oak. And you get this splitting... Further down, they seem to be in much better shape, and of course, up higher, they're in excellent shape. But it doesn't help that where they're the most compromised in terms of iron sickness is also where they take the tightest bend around the chine here. Anyway, I've talked about that at length, but you can see that takes quite a sharp turn right there. So, the frames are generally in great shape. I don't know how strong they are. Are they 80% as strong as the original, 60, 40? Doesn't really matter. They're holding the boat together right now. I'm not going to refasten into the existing frames, or not much anyway, because I'm putting brand new frames in. I'll refasten to the new frames halfway between the existing. Huge advantage of that is that the new fastenings go in in all clean new wood, not into wood where there's already fasteners and possibly some water or iron sickness in the planking. Certainly, new screws into portions of these frames would not hold terribly well either. So I'm very excited about that. That should work out just great. Planking, well, as far as I can tell, the planking on the boat is in splendid, splendid shape. Um, obviously in time, planks will need to be repaired, but I haven't found anything that I'm not happy with yet. Um, and as I said, because I'm gonna put new fasteners in from the outside through the middle bays, um, I won't be compromising the planking any further. The thing about the planking that I do have to work on, possibly, is at the butt blocks. Now for those who've been following along for a while, you know that I had some back and forth on my concerns about butt blocks. Um, butt block, for those uh, who may not know, this plank and this plank meet in a butt joint underneath this block. In other words, it's not the same piece of wood. So to give structural backing, they put this block in between the frames and lots of screws from the outside to hold it all together. Now, I originally had thought that butt blocks were a bad idea and it was a good idea to redo all the planks with scarfs, making them a continuous glued plank. I've been talked out of that. Certainly Leo <laughs> feels the same way. So I need to do something about the butt blocks. Um, the, Quite a significant thing is going to happen with these, and I'm going to go into that in detail later, but they're all going to be replaced with something much, much robust. Then there's some other blocks on this boat that I don't actually understand. This is a butt block. That was a butt block. What's this? This is not over a butt seam in the plank. In fact, it's over a seam um, between the planks, and it's maybe some kind of it dealt with a defect or something. I don't really know what that is. I've never seen that on a wooden boat before. There's quite a few of them. They're all over the place. So um, I have to uh, figure out what those are and whether they're required. Because as I mentioned, because I'm putting new frames in, sistering new frames in, each one of these butt blocks or mini butt blocks are in the way. And I need a solution for them. And as I said, I have one which we'll talk about later. So anyway, that pretty much summarizes what's going on in the bilge. Pretty much the same detail on the other side. Almost all the moisture you see is coming in from the shine seam, which is not in great shape on the boat. It's not gushing, but it's certainly weeping. So that should be able to be improved significantly. Okay, well, it's time to get this engine back together and running. 
Um, it's been sitting out here a bit too long. Very tolerant marina and neighbors. Anyway, uh, back into the back of the truck, reassembled and started because I have a nibble on it. And that's really good news because as soon as it goes back in the back of the truck, driving the truck around gets, well, a little more difficult. All right, let's get out. Okay, the next thing is I'm gonna crank it, but I'm gonna crank it and not let it start because I want the oil pressure to come up because the engine has been completely out of oil uh, and I don't want it to fire without oil pressure. So uh, we'll go around the other side and we'll lock off the shutoff on the injection pump. Here's the throttle lever and this is the shutoff lever. You can see it's attached to this electric solenoid so that it has an electric shutoff. So I'm just gonna wire this into the off position uh, so that it doesn't start while we're playing with it rudimentary little piece of wire and now we can crank it and it won't start and we can watch the oil pressure gauge uh, and when that comes up I know then I can release that and we can see if it'll actually go Woohoo! cable is attached to the starter motor and now <laughs> I don't know why I have the worst jumper cables in the world but it's what I have hopefully they're heavy enough to start this big diesel here we go Woohoo! got a little warm there as luck has it Kim's here Ho ho ho! <laughs> Just happens to be picking up uh, some last few things and he had in his car, and I knew he had it, a super set of jumper cables. <laughs> Save the day one last time, Kim. Help. Let's see if this will crank now. Ah, there we go. That's what I like to see. Okay, so we can take the um, wire off the stop lever now and uh, let it start. <laughs> well, there we go. 
Well, fantastic. That'll do for now. I'm very, very pleased. A um, little bit of smoke, but it certainly seems to clean up a bit once you come off the idle. Engine hasn't really ever come up to temperature in the last three or four times it started. Um, so I'm going to have to get to do that. No alternator on it right now. I've got to put the alternator on and then uh, it's been the water pump, which means I can bring it up to temperature. I can't really run it long without the water pump running. So generally, I'm very, very pleased. Um, hopefully uh, uh, any new prospects will be just as pleased. I'll have to shoot some video and stuff of it once I you know, tidy this mess up a bit. Anyway, we're running out of day. Days are really short this time of year. Thanks for tagging along. Well then, one fabulous advantage of having the Perkins back in the truck is I can strap it down and use my truck as a truck again. Well, I can hear you saying, Peter, what's all that sketchy looking two by fours in your truck? Well, seeing as you asked so nicely, this is cedar. And this is going to be the structure for the new wheelhouse sole. Yes, it is. Oh, wait a bit. Let's get it down before it starts to Gotta find some space inside for these before it starts to rain. Especially turning into kind of a nice day. Okay, and it's in as well as the last several days. These four sheets of three-quarter inch marine ply, which have made getting in and out of bed a little bit tricky in the last couple of days, but it's kind of kind of cozy. Anyway, so here is the new wheelhouse sole. So I know what you're saying. You're saying, well, why would you spend thousand dollars which is what these four pieces of plywood cost on super nice super strong marine ply and then cheap out on cedar for the actual structure well i'll tell you why i could have used a hardwood let's say white oak um very very strong very expensive i could have used douglas fir which was an option um because it's reasonably uh, inexpensive and it's a softwood. And the reason I wanted a softwood is I've done a lot of research about um, structure in a boat and vibration. And that's why the engine beds are going to be Douglas fir. There's a reasonable um, theory in that a softer wood will absorb more of the vibration. And that's totally true. I've built things out of cedar and I just... I'm not saying I noticed it vibrated less, but it had less of a ring to it, less... I think you know where I'm going with this. Anyway, so the structure, which doesn't have to be terrifically strong, and I'll show you why, because it's going to be a lot of intermediate supports. I want it to be simple, straightforward, easy to put in and take out because of the way I'm going to have to have future access into the wheelhouse bilge. And I like this idea of it being a softer wood. Uh, in fact, I'm even going to lay the... Um, sole plywood down on a bed of uh, foam strips in the final installation not for a little bit and then you say well why such massive wood up here well for the same reason the final barrier um sound barrier between the engine bay and the wheelhouse i wanted to be the solidest densest material i could imagine or i guess afford it also means it's super strong in terms of a diaphragm it creates some strength to the boat it's has much better span capacity, so it's going to be much stronger over my not so strong structure below. Um, the original sole that was in the wheelhouse was half inch lumber yard ply, and I just hated walking on it. It just it didn't feel like a floor. So this is a splurge that is an experiment. There's a lot more to talk about. Well, hello and welcome to the travels with Jordy Beer of the Week here live in the Bowel Studio, Bowel Bilge bottom of the boat. 
Anyway, not many places to sit on the boat anymore, so I brought a table and chair in to the built for this. Um, going to Arrowsmith Brewery for yet another porter. Yes, because I had so much uh, fun last week. This is the low pressure porter from Arrowsmith Brewery here on the island. Okay. I'm perched on a rather narrow little chunk of structure, so I mustn't wiggle around too much. Nice and dark, like the look of this. What a busy week this has been, and what a busy week next week's going to be in the anticipation of Christmas coming. Fantastic. Let's see if we can get a little head on the end of that. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly, I have a newfound appreciation for Porter. Gotta get moving here. Mm. Okay. <laughs> As I said, a newfound appreciation for Porter. I love that. That's absolutely fantastic. Okay, um, some announcements. Uh, last week's winner of a t-shirt is Panacea. Panacea, get in touch with me, or I'll get in touch with you. And you have won yourself a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Um, last week we have a new Patreon aboard, so happy about that. Dan Jorndal, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Dan. Uh, thanks ever so much for coming aboard. Cheers. Mm. And also another supporter through PayPal, uh, Klaus Njojel. And I, again, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you so much, Klaus. Mm. And a fun present off the Amazon wish list. I've been really excited about these. Um, a whole box, uh, four of these very thin, very nice little um, LED ceiling lights that will go in the ceiling panels in the folks. Well, that's the plan anyway. Uh, this one's out of the box because I've tested it and it's a lovely warm light. I'm really quite excited about that and very discreet. So thank you so much, whoever you are, because as seems to be the norm these days, it came without any sort of indication of who sent it. So if you sent me a box of these lovely little LED ceiling lights, please let me know and I'll thank you properly. Cheers to you, whoever you are. Mm. And all you need now is a word of the week and uh, because we're the week before Christmas and this is also going so very well you might have got a clue the word of the week this week will be anticipation and so if you'd like to win a Travels with Jordy t-shirt use the word anticipation in a comment down below and I'll pick it random over the first week or so and I pick you the winner Travels with Jordy t-shirt see you next week which will be Boxing Day. Cheers. Mm.